beginning of my sophomore year of high school, I started hearing a new word around campus. Time to go vape, people said. Vape or die. Now, being a relatively innocent sophomore, I didn't exactly know what this was. But as I eventually figured out, and as I'm sure most of you know, a vape is a slang term for an electronic cigarette, or an e-cigarette. In recent years, e-cigarettes have gained incredible popularity, especially in the United States. But what exactly is an e-cig, and how do they work? Now, before I address this question, I'd like to talk about a more established technology called a hookah pipe. Hookah pipes work by burning whatever mixture is inside them, usually a mixture of tobacco and molasses, and running it through cold water. This combination of burning and cooling creates carcinogens that the person then inhales that is detrimental to our health. E-cigarettes, on the other hand, don't work like that. Nothing is burned. Rather, e-cigarettes work by vaporizing the liquid inside the cartridges. This then prevents these harmful carcinogens and leads, leads to their perception as safe. In fact, one of the main compounds in most e-cigarette liquid cartridges is polyethylene glycol, which is an FDA-approved substance. This is what an e-cigarette looks like. It contains of the atomizing device, which liquidizes the liquid, the inhaler, the container, the battery, and the light. And since they were patented by Chinese inventor Han Lick in 2003, e-cigarettes have gained incredible popularity. They were introduced to the US market in 2007, and in 2013, their sales reached $2 billion. In 2014, we learned that 17.1% of teens in the United States reported using an e-cigarette in the last year, whereas only 136 reported using an actual cigarette. So it's clear to see that e-cigarettes are becoming very relevant in today's society. So the thing, in, in February of last year, Newbury Park's journalism program went to a program called Teens Kick Ash. Clever name, I know. At Teens Kick Ash, we listened to a variety of lectures about tobacco and other drugs. One of these was e-cigarettes, and what I learned there shocked me. For one thing, all the small independent e-cigarette companies, many of them have been bought out by large tobacco companies. This means that when you see commercials that say, stop smoking cigarettes, smoke e-cigarettes, they're better for you, it's the same people getting the money. In fact, what's interesting is that the marketing strategies for e-cigarettes and cigarettes are largely the same. If you look at this commercial, both of these commercials feature a woman, stylishly dressed, looking cool and suave. One of them's for e-cigarettes and one of them's for cigarettes. It's the same with this one. A handsome man on the front looking happy with an e-cigarette or a cigarette. It's interesting that it's not even just visual, it's also the same words. What worked in the past is working again, essentially. So right now you're probably thinking, so what? Why does it matter if the same people are getting the money when e-cigarettes aren't bad for me? The problem with this is that's not entirely true. In 2009, the FDA did a study on e-cigarettes and they found that many of them had detectable levels of different carcinogens than the ones found in hookah pipes and tobacco. Recent studies by the University of Rochester and by Johns Hopkins University have found that e-cigarette liquid actually can damage lung tissue and harm our lung cells. The problem is that there's such a new technology that we don't know what's in them. In fact, many e-cigarettes being marketed as nicotine-free have actually had detectable levels of nicotine found inside of them. Along with this, and they come in a variety of flavors, so they're being marketed to a younger generation. What we know is that e-cigarettes aren't required to label what's inside of them. There's no requirement for labels, and the labels that do exist aren't always complete. In fact, Miguel Martin, who's the president of an e-cigarette company called Logic, told NBC last year that apart from the labels on the e-cigarettes, there's probably other chemicals in them. He just doesn't know. So the problem with this is that e-cigarettes are being marketed largely to teenagers. Back when cigarettes were the cool thing to smoke, there was flavored candy that looked like cigarettes. Now there's flavored e-cigarettes. 
Many researchers are concerned that this will lead to a society where smoking is acceptable again, even if it's in the electronic form. Now, last year, the FDA proposed a bill called the Deeming Rule, which would essentially put e-cigarettes under their jurisdiction. If the Deeming Rule is adopted, we'll be able to finally know what goes in e-cigarette cartridges. We'll be able to know we'll be able to have comprehensive regulation on who can buy them, because right now there's not. Essentially, right now, in 10 US states and Washington, DC, teenagers can completely legally go out and buy an e-cigarette. In almost every US state, we can buy them online, which essentially negates any age restriction. Because the University of North Carolina did a study that found that out of 98 attempts to buy e-cigarettes online by teenagers, only five were stopped on the, on the basis of age. So age verification isn't something that's happening. So if the FDA adopts the deeming rule, many of these problems will be fixed. We'll hopefully know what's in cartridges. We'll hopefully know who can buy them and when. But until then, I urge everyone to stay informed on e-cigarettes, stay informed about what those around you and what you are smoking and to never make a decision that's not based off of credible information.